This is a quick tutorial on how to use the Mivuri 3D Gesture Recognition plugin for Unity. You can find Mivuri in the Unity Asset Store. Just search for 3D Gesture Recognition. Click the Add to My Assets button to add it to your library. Then in Unity go to Window Package Manager, switch to My Assets, select Mivuri and click Download or import. Alternatively, you can get Miburi from our GitHub repository. Just search for Miburi. In the Unity folder, download the Miburi.unity package file. Be sure not to use right-click download as it downloads the website. Instead, click on the file and then click on the download button on the right side. Then in Unity, go to Assets, Import Package, Custom Package, and select the downloaded Unity package file. Either way, you can choose which files from the package to import. The package contains several samples and the source code for the gesture manager, but to use Miburi, you only need the plugin library files and the C -sharp scripts. So you can deselect the Gesture Manager folder and the Samples folder. Only the Plugins folder, Miburi CS, Gesture Recognition CS and Gesture Combinations CS are required. If you don't want to use the Unity package, you can also add the necessary files directly. Go to the GitHub repository and download the Miburi.cs, GestureRecognition.cs and GestureCombinations.cs scripts, as well as the plugin library files for the platform that you want to support. The plugin library files are located in the plugins folder and include libraries for Windows, Linux, Android and HoloLens. Place these inside a folder named plugins in your Unity project and in the Unity inspector select the correct platform for each library file. Once imported, the easiest way to use Miburi is to just add the Miburi script component to your scene. You can attach it to any game object or you can create a new empty game object for it. You can even have multiple game objects, each with their own instance of Miburi. For example, when you have different sets of gestures for different game modes. On the Miburi component, make sure to enter all the settings. Most important is the gesture database file, where your gestures are stored. You can record and manage gestures easily in the gesture manager. The link is in the description to the video. Set the Unity XR plugin setting to the plugin that you are using in your project. This is necessary because different plugins have different coordinate systems. Then set the Miburi coordinate system to whichever coordinate system you used when recording your gestures. Miburi will then take care of converting the coordinate systems. Next, set the game objects which you want to track as left hand and right hand. This can be the game object that has the tracked pose driver attached to it, but it could also be an object that you pick up such as a sorcerer's wand. The left trigger input and right trigger input select the button or event which will start and stop the gesture. This doesn't have to be a controller trigger, it can be any button, key or unity event. If you're using the old Unity input system, use the name of the input as it appears in the Project Settings Input Manager. 
and select as type whether it is an axis, button or key input. If you're using the new Unity input system, you can select input system control and type in the path of the input system control that should trigger the gesture. For example, XR controller right hand trigger. Alternatively, if you want to use input actions, you can do so as well. Open your input actions asset or create a new one if you don't have one yet. And create or select your action map. In the action map, set up the input actions that you want to use. Beware that paths may differ depending on the controller and the Unity XR plugin that you're using. The action type can be any of the three, button, value or path through. Go to your player input component in your scene or add a new one to any game object and make sure the actions asset and map are selected. Set the behavior to invoke unity events and expand your events action map section. Here you will find your created input actions. For each, add a new entry to the list by pressing the plus button. Then select the game object with the memory component and set the function to on input action left trigger and on input action right trigger respectively. You will notice that there are also separate functions for press and release if you want to use separate events. Of course you can do all this in C sharp scripts if you prefer. You can even manipulate the left trigger value and right trigger value manually at runtime to start and end a gesture motion. Finally, if you don't want to define the start and end of a gesture at all, but instead want Mivuri to continuously try to detect gestures in all your motions, you can enable continuous gesture recognition in the Mivuri component. The gesture period is the time frame on which Mivuri will work in milliseconds and gesture smoothing means how many continuous identification attempts will be considered, sort of like taking an average. The last setting, compensate head motion, can be used when your player is moving or turning while gesturing. Usually though, compensating the head motion degrades the recognition performance since people tend to stare at the hand or the object that they are gesturing with. Then compensating the head motion will reduce the hand motion. Now that everything is set up, we can add events for when a gesture was identified. Open any of your scripts or create a new script. And add a new function with return type void and one parameter of type gesture completion data. Within this function, you can decide what should happen in your game based on the identified gesture and its similarity value. Note that in the case of failure, the gesture ID will be a negative error code. You can use the gesture recognition get error message function to turn that error code into a human readable message. Then select the game object with the memory component and in the inspector, 
add a new event to the on gesture completion event and select your game object and function. Now, when your player makes a gesture, your function will be called. And that's it. Thank you for watching.